5G, fifth generation cellular, is coming. It's sort of here already. So we're going to give you the latest update from AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, look at boosters and antennas and more. Hi, I'm Chris from the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on the state of 5G as of the... Um, end of June of 2020, because a lot of stuff has been happening, a lot of uh, news has been coming out from the carriers, as, well, 5G is starting to ramp up and actually get a little bit interesting now. Not totally time to jump on board just yet, spoiler alert, but there's a lot of news that's worth tracking. So first up, Verizon. So Verizon has been rolling out 5G on a millimeter wave spectrum. This is a super short range, but crazy, crazy fast spectrum that has only been deployed to tiny parts of 35 cities. So Verizon by far has the least amount of 5G coverage map, but they have some incredible speeds to demonstrate. And now to show it all off, they've actually got a new flagship device. It is the Lenovo Flex 5G laptop. This is the first laptop to be designed with an ARM CPU designed by Qualcomm and integrated 5G modems. So this is a whole kind of new take on a laptop. It's basically internally more like a cell phone, but it runs Windows 10. It's got a battery that should last you know, 20 plus hours, and it has a 5G modem that they're showing off um, getting two gigabit per second speed tests, but only if you're in one of these areas with Verizon 5G ultra wideband coverage. Um, and the rest, of the rest of the place, well, you just get, you know, Verizon's as good as their 4G gets. And now, one of the other interesting angles with this new laptop is the data plan that Verizon is making available for it. So if you already have a, voice, a Verizon voice line, you can activate a data plan on this laptop for $30 a month. That gives you unlimited on-device usage on both 5G and 4G, unlimited hotspot if you are in a 5G ultra-wideband area, um, and if you're in a 5G ultra-wideband area, it's unlimited 4K streaming, no throttling on video streaming. So this is the first time in a long time that Verizon has had an official straight from Verizon data plan that you can get unlimited laptop data. This isn't like their unlimited 4G hotspot plans or even their unlimited existing 5G hotspot plans where you actually have pretty serious limits on how much data you can use. So assuming you're willing to work on that laptop um, or you've got a lot of access to these um, Verizon high-speed areas, it's a pretty impressive data plan only $30 a month if you already have a Verizon voice line, or $90 a month if you do not have any other lines with Verizon. So that's the exciting update from Verizon. Now moving on to AT&T, uh, AT&T is now claiming to be the first company in America to deploy a technology called Dynamic Spectrum Sharing, or otherwise known as a DSS. And so DSS is going to be one of the most important technologies that enables 5G to spread out um, across the country and to become the next big thing. So what is it? Um, DSS is a technology that lets a carrier layer 5G on top of an existing 4G network using the exact same spectrums and channels so that the load between 4G and 5G can be balanced dynamically based upon a need. So with DSS, they don't have to turn off 4G spectrum and then turn on that channel completely for 5G. They can use the same channels that they're already using to do both. And that means once DSS is turned on nationwide and spreads, they can actually have the 5G coverage map almost overnight be the same as the 4G coverage map. This is, wow, you'll be able to have 5G coverage just about everywhere. And at and is the first with this. Now, DSS is just getting started, so they've only said they've deployed DSS in parts of Texas and Florida, um, but this will be a big deal, and at and is saying by the end of summer, they will have true nationwide 5G. Um, Verizon is also saying by the end of the year, they will be using DSS, and that will let them have nationwide 5G. And even T-Mobile is um, planning to use DSS as well, but We'll talk about why it's, the, it's a rather low priority for them, because they've got other advantages. Now, you know, AT&T is not just going to be relying on DSS. They've also set aside some of their um, LTE Band 5, um, and in parts of the country they've been turning it off for LTE, part, part of that band, and devoting that strictly to 5G. So they've already been able to roll out 5G across 300-plus you know, cities, and um, a significant portion of the country's population. So AT&T, 
has already rolled out 5G to a huge chunk of the country, and with DSS, they'll be able to roll it out everywhere. But there is a catch. Now, DSS doesn't let cellular radios defy the laws of physics. It's, um, you know, 5G radios can do more with a given chunk of spectrum, but they can't work miracles with it. They can't go twice as fast or three times as fast or do amazing things like you see in the millimeter wave spectrum where there's whole new greenfield spectrum to use. With the using existing 4G spectrum, well, the 5G performance will start at basically really good 4G. So AT&T is kind of setting people up to be get 5G, but then be like, well, this is hardly anything different than I'm used to. So 5G built on top of DSS is just really good 4G. It's a great starting point, but to get the real performance advantages of 5G, you need to add new and additional spectrum into the mix. And that brings us to T-Mobile. Now, this is the, the, the next big carrier to look at. Uh, T-Mobile is becoming the leader in adding a new spectrum for 5G, not just overlaying 5G onto existing 4G spectrum. And T-Mobile's been doing it in a, kind of a layer cake strategy, and they literally bake the cake to demonstrate, the, demonstrate this. So down at the low band, long range frequencies, T-Mobile has a lot of 600 megahertz spectrum that they bought several years ago. And they didn't, they deployed 4G on part of it, but they kept a lot of it in reserve. So it's there and ready for 5G. No need to balance and do DSS. It's there for 5G. And that's allowed T-Mobile to deploy that low band uh, 5G nationwide. It's not super fast, but T-Mobile's already got 5G coverage almost all across the country. And then, well, T-Mobile does have some millimeter wave spectrum in parts of key cities, just like Verizon and AT&T do. Super fast, but super short range and only really useful for key urban areas. And then, well, this is where Sprint comes in. The key reason that Sprint was such an attractive acquisition is Sprint owned a ton of what's called mid-band spectrum. This is frequencies, um, not super high frequency, not super short range, not super long range, uh, kind of in the middle. Um, in the LTE world, they were known as LTE Band 41. And this mid-band spectrum is kind of the sweet spot. It gives you a lot of speed and still range enough to go out into the suburbs and out even a little bit into rural areas. And now that T-Mobile owns Sprint, T-Mobile has announced they're shutting down the tentative the, the, the 5G network that Sprint had started to deploy and is going to be deploying a layer cake strategy using their nationwide low band and now the spectrum they got from Sprint, the mid-band. And they've been showing off this strategy at work in New York City and a few other places are starting to basically unleash all this spectrum. And it gives T-Mobile a huge head start on top of other carriers because the other carriers don't have mid-band spectrum yet. They're basically scrambling to get it. There will be new auctions later in the year. But T-Mobile, big head start on doing that type of 5G. So... That's an update on the carriers in the race to bring out 5G. Now, what about the hardware and devices that you'll connect with? Now, 5G smartphones are starting to come to market, and some of the ones that have been out in the last few months are actually pretty interesting. They'll actually be able to take advantage of the DSS technology and uh, quite a range of the um, different, different frequency bands and stuff. Any of the 5G stuff that came out last year, I'm sorry to tell you, if you bought into it then, it's already obsolete because it won't be able to use any of that DSS stuff. But just now, we're starting to see smartphones that have this capability. Um, and probably by the end of the year, we will see um, hotspots with 5G capability. And, well, there's also antennas. If you're going to be building an integrated system, well, you want to put an antenna on the roof of your RV or boat, a lot of the old existing gear... Um, it's going to struggle in the 5G era because it was designed for 4G frequency bands. So the important thing to think through is the, when they're layering 5G on top of the bands that were used for 4G the DS, and using the DSS technology, the um, old antennas, the old boosters, they will help out. But when they're starting to expand into the new things that will, the new spectrum that will give 5G its greater performance and really unlock its capabilities, Old antennas, old boosters, none of that stuff is going to help. So there's new 5G-ready antennas that you might want to start shopping around for that were more future-proof. They'll go all the way down to 600 megahertz. That is uh, the, the low frequency that T-Mobile is using. 
and all the way up to 6 gigahertz. So it'll cover the entire range of spectrum that matters for 5G. So we're just now starting to see a few of these antennas coming to market, and so there's more coming soon. So something to think about if you're trying to future-proof and plan ahead is think about a 5G-compatible antenna to cover the full set of spectrum. As far as 5G and boosters, there's probably not going to be anything new for a while. The FCC hasn't really done a lot to um, uh, authorize new frequency bands for boosters. So boosters will still basically work in the way that they have. So only on those certain frequency bands when they're used with DSS to be both 4G and 5G, a booster will help with that some. Um, but remember, you know, 4G technology is still going to be around for a long time, so your booster will still be helping with that. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of misleading marketing with, uh, like, you know, WeBoost talking about their boosters being 5G ready. But when you read the fine print, they're talking about them being ready to continue working in a 5G world, not that the booster has any 5G technology in it. Um, and it comes down to cellular integrated routers and um, hotspots. The 5G devices for the hotspots will probably be just like, you know, their hotspots are basically just smartphones without the phone part. And by the end of this year, we'll start to see some new flagship hotspots that will probably have support for all the 5G frequency bands. It'll be really advanced technological powerhouses. But cellular integrated routers, now there's a bit of a catch here, is millimeter wave 5G, the, the super high frequency signals, will not carry over an antenna cable any distance at all, and they require very, very specialized antennas. Um, so any device that wants to support millimeter wave 5G has to have the modem and the antenna integrated very, very closely together, a matter of inches apart, which means we'll see 5G cellular integrated routers coming out later this year and into next year, but they won't support millimeter wave. And we'll see, well, no roof-mounted antennas will support millimeter waves. So you'll have to know that you're giving up on that super, super fast urban speed and coverage um, if you're going with any of these technologies because millimeter wave is just not going to work over a traditional setup with a modem inside and an antenna on the roof. Now, what might happen in the year ahead is, in the years ahead, is we'll see everything combined together on the roof. You'll have a 5G modem with millimeter wave and all the other bands built right into the antenna and everything will be up on your roof. Um, we don't know of anything like that in the pipeline, but that is really the only way we'll see millimeter wave 5G working inside of RVs and boats and whatnot like that. Now, one other update on 5G gear. We're seeing some confusion. We're seeing some basically 5G fakers out there where things are being labeled as 5G um, when they're not actually 5G. So in particular, we're seeing this with devices that are uh, coming out with support for LTE Band 71, T-Mobile 600 megahertz spectrum, and the people selling it think, oh, T-Mobile 600 megahertz, that's the spectrum they bought for 5G. This device must be 5G then, and they slap a 5G label on it. That is not necessarily the case, just because because band 71 is also being used for 4G. So we have seen some low-end stuff with some misleading marketing, so be a little bit careful, particularly on anything T-Mobile labeled 5G, until you know for sure it really is fifth-generation cellular. Now, to wrap things up, um, the, the race for 5G is really exciting to watch. This is the evolution of cellular technologies, the fifth generation of cellular technology. Um, and it is laying the groundwork for the next generation of cellular evolution. But 5G isn't on day one going to be a huge jump like this. It is starting on the foundation of where 4G is and will be have basically another 10 years to build into its full potential. So don't expect that you know, uh, any jump you make to 5G this year is going to be a huge dramatic leap unless you happen to be in some of these uh, rare areas where the the full millimeter wave ultra wideband will give you gigabit speeds. But 5G is laying a great foundation for the future, and every 5G device will also be a great 4G device. So we're starting to get to the point in time where you may want to pay attention to, to new devices on the horizon, may want to start planning your 5G future, but don't rush into it. Don't, you know, feel free to hold off for now. 5G stuff will get better and cheaper, and all the bugs will be worked out. 
in the year ahead. Now, the one big thing that is coming in the, the 5G world that's probably going to uh, unleash 5G going mainstream is going to be the iPhone 12. It is um, you know, pretty much an open secret, all but certain, that the key feature of the new iPhones will be 5G radios. And um, whether you're an Apple fan or not, Apple sets the pace um, and sets the drumbeat for all the mobile carriers around the world, and particularly in the U.S., so the expectation is that is going to be kind of the coming out party for AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile, bringing out, turning on really their full nationwide coverage, bringing out new 5G plans, and really starting to compete with each other for 5G coverage and performance and customers. So that is going be a time to watch. It'll be September, October, maybe November, depending on if COVID delays the next generation iPhones. But it will be kind of the time when the things start to get doubly interesting. And then the other um, device manufacturers like LG and Samsung that have been leaders in the first generation of 5G will be ready with their next wave of devices. So 5G is going to be interesting, particularly towards the end of this year. We'll be covering it closely at the Mobile Internet Research Center. You could follow along with all our 5G coverage at mobileinternetinfo.com 5G. And we will be tracking this every step of the way. Do you like the cool mobile and connected shirts you see us wearing in all our videos? Well, now's your chance to get one. Now, we offered these shirts initially when we launched them over two years ago, and our members have access to them year-round. But in celebration of hitting 30,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, thank you for that. We are offering them in a limited run again, run again this month only. So you can get them on the bottom of every video, or go to mobileinternetinfo.com slash shirts, and we appreciate your support of the Resource Center. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.